What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to LTH. My name is Abe and in this video, I would like to cover the Unify OS server software. And so if you are familiar with Unify, you know that this is used to manage all your devices within your network. It's usually hosted on one of your Unify devices, but let's say you don't use one of those devices that has management capabilities. Maybe you just use their switching, or maybe you need more connections and computing power to manage your devices, but you don't want to go out and buy a completely new device. You can now self host it as of July of this year. And so some of the capabilities of this, well, it includes everything that's already a part of the Unify OS, but you can run it on x86, 64, ARM64 servers, etc. It includes all of the latest technologies that can be found in the Unify software. So maybe if you have a legacy device and somehow, or for some reason, it's not getting the updates, you can do it now. You get the heart of the full Unify site, providing fast and private control as well as a Unify site manager. And it just gives you all that capability you really need within your platform to do it. And it looks just like this, like you would find on your devices. When you log in, you have your server IP, the uptime, your connections, you can go to your topology, you can see how the whole network is logically mapped out, move between different networks. If you're like a MSP or an ISP and you wanna manage multiple things, you can do that. You can go in and see all your unified devices and their computing power and how much they're using and if you maybe need to or don't need to upgrade but that is a very long intro let's get on with this video don't forget all the notes to perform this task will be found down below in the description on our website learn to homelab.com Okay, so the first thing you need to do is host this somewhere on something. In our case, we are going to host a virtual machine on Proxmox that will then run this server. That also allows us high availability of this server between all our nodes because they are in a cluster. So if any of them go down, all our unified devices will still be able to be communicated with and managed. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up a virtual machine real quick. For you guys, just some basic settings, you know, four cores, four gigs of RAM, and uh, you know about 50 gigs of storage, and then I'll come back to this video when that's ready to go, and we're gonna start installing all of our commands. Okay, so now that you have your virtual machine configured and ready, just on this left side of the screen, I have SSH'd into our Unify server VM. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a place to store some prerequisite files with just this command, sudo nano. And if you notice, this file is a .ssh file because we are going to create a script here with the following content. So within here, we are just giving you guys an easy way to install all the prerequisites that you need to be able to get this system on online, like Podman um, and any other things that you may not have included on your device. So we just put it in here and if else statements to make sure it is all good to go. And so then we're going to click control X, click the letter Y, and then enter to ensure that file has been saved. And so now we're just going to ensure that this file has the execution commands with sudo change modify plus X for execute our script name, just like that and click enter. And now we can run this script. So if you want to run a script, if you don't know on Linux, you can do that normally with a dot forward slash the file name that's saying, hey, I would like you to run this. And we can see it's running. We're getting the prompts that we've put into that script file. And we're gonna go ahead and let everything install right now. And then start requesting down and downloading all the files that we need for the actual Unify software itself. Okay, so now that that is done installing, we're gonna go ahead and start actually grabbing the files for the Unify OS server itself. We first need to just get install these dependencies, which these commands that I'm doing now are all a part of the actual tutorial that you can find on Unify's website, which is linked on the article. If any of these commands go out of date, you'll be able to go and reference those. And then we're gonna do a wget for the latest version of the actual um, server software itself. So that's what it's downloading right here. So we can see we're going up to 700 megabytes here in just a second. And then once that's done, we can just make sure that the installer has the correct file name. So you can do that with just ls, 
to figure out whatever your current version of the download is. You can see that and know what to type in for the next command. So for our next command, it's gonna once again do what we kind of did earlier, give this execute permissions, and it's all if I type two F three A and tab, it'll complete that file name. So that's why you do that, just so you know what that file is named. And then you click enter and the file has been changed. So now we can do the same thing, right? So if we look at this command, it's sudo dot that forward slash and that same file name, just like that and click enter. And then do we want to install and proceed? We're gonna type Y because the capital letter in the command line is the default answer if you click enter. The default answer is no. So we wanna type Y and then enter because we do plan to install this. Now, this is one thing I wanted to show you guys because some of you might run into this issue. You need to really be careful here because this software requires a lot of space. So air, insufficient disk space, free up some space. So you wanna make sure wherever this is installed has at least um, 50 gigs, right? And so I believe, let me just make sure in my requirements, yes, 50 gigs. So if not, go ahead and make sure your virtual machine has enough space. So uh, like I recommend at least like 70 to 80 gigs probably of storage on this virtual machine. Not saying it's gonna use all that, but you need to make sure that you have more than enough available to do so. Okay, so either you already had enough space, if you didn't, you've done something to give yourself enough space, roughly around 70 gigs. We're just gonna do that command, the letter Y, to ensure that we run the install script. And we're gonna let this install, and this probably will take a little bit, 10 to 15 minutes, but go ahead and let this run, and then come back to this video, unpause it. Okay, and just like that, you can see now it gives us the domain, or excuse me, the IP address of our server and the port 11443, and we can just go to that website right now and get logged in because it's installed. So it's a pretty quick process. We can see OS servers booting. You might need to wait a minute or two, but then you're going to log into your normal Unify account and you're actually still able to remotely log into your dashboard even though it's self-hosted from Unify's website, which is super useful. It allows you to connect and have any of your employees or yourself connect and manage your network from wherever around the world, which is super awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in and then we'll just walk around this real quick. Okay, so again, I showed you guys th this at the beginning of the video, but once you're logged in, essentially you have all your tabs with your network, it's fully featured, just like the one on the device, there's no features missing. But if you wanna add a device, you'll come in here and if they're on your network and not configured to something, you'll usually see like status, not assigned or not connected, and you may need to reset it. And then over here, it will give you whatever instructions you need to connect to your device and then any other information related to that device. But that's honestly super self-explanatory. I don't really need to show that in the video. And at the moment, I only have one Unify device, which I'm using for another project, which I will show in another video. And that is where this video comes into play to get ready for that one. But anyways, for instance, with this flex two and a half gig, there'd be a little sign over here and it would say hold down the reset button for like at least 10 seconds and then it will auto see on here and then you'll click right around here, connect and like associate with this server and it will be connected. So it's super easy, super simple. Thank you for watching. Go ahead and leave a comment of why you want to self host your UOS server versus using one of your unified devices that you may or may not have. Thank you for watching. My name is Abe, signing off.